and Court TV legal correspondent Julia Janae, who joins us now live from San Antonio, Texas, with the latest. Julia, great to see you. All right, give us a sense. You've arrived on the scene. You've been in the courtroom. What's the feel of that courtroom? And more importantly, who is there in the gallery? Um, is anyone supporting the defendant at this point? And the last thing is, how is this jury reacting to all this tape they're watching of this interrogation? Oh, Michael, inside of this courtroom, it is clear that there is support, representation for those four victims. As far as who's there for the defendant, no one that I've noticed so far. We do know that during some of the pretrial hearings, he did have a friend that showed up for him. But by far and large, far and large there are people here representing Melissa Ramirez and Claudine Luera and Griselda Hernandez and Janelle Ortiz. All of them uh, sitting together seemingly on the left side of this courtroom behind the prosecution. Also want to point out that we have been working to confirm uh, someone who's missing inside of the courtroom. One of the prosecutors who had been there at the prosecutor's table, uh, Joshua Davila, he no longer is there. And some of the outlets here in San Antonio, one of the local ones, KSAT, confirming that he is no longer employed with the prosecution's office. So we have reached out to the DA's office to get that confirmation information as well, but a missing face, but not stopping how things are progressing inside of the courtroom. I do want to point out something that some of these family members are wearing there when they're sitting and listening to all of this evidence. It's a t-shirt, a white t-shirt with four photos on the front, the faces of those victims and the words on the back saying they were loved, which I think is an important message to continue to send because there have been difficult moments inside of that courtroom, especially now that we're hearing these officers tried to build rapport with the defendant, possibly even talking about uh, trying to connect with him on why he may have committed something like this, saying that these were victims who uh, may not have been noticed and there wouldn't be many people missing them. That's something that we're having to hear during that interrogation video of these officers trying to get him to talk. And it's a reminder in that gallery that they were, in fact, very much loved. They are missed and that people are here fighting to see justice for them. So that is the feel that we're getting from the gallery. These jurors, they are attentive, but this has been difficult to watch in terms of the hours and hours of sometimes just this defendant not moving. He's sitting and he's humming to himself. So some of these jurors are checking out, looking a bit tired. But overall, we're working through the many hours that are left of this interrogation. Julia, quickly going back to the prosecutor issue, uh, did I hear correctly? Because there was some sense that he had left the prosecution team. But even more than that, I think you said he's actually left the prosecutor's office. That is what has been reported, that he decided to quit and that he announced it of sorts on Facebook. We're working to confirm that, though, with the district attorney's office, that he is no longer employed. But sometimes HR issues are, are not readily available or that information is not readily available from an employer. So we will see what kind of statement they put out. But again, has not seemed to change the flow of how things go inside of the courtroom. He was a second chair prosecutor of sorts. Uh, but certainly it's a buzz now inside of the courthouse. Yeah, that's interesting. You know, these, these uh, attorneys, they work as teams. So missing a team member, it can affect the way things go, but I guess things are still going smoothly. All right, Julie, the information is coming out in this interrogation and this tape, and, and what I consider to be fits and spurts. Um, what, do, what have police actually learned, or what do they end up learning from this interrogation? Well, what we're anticipating is that at the end of all of this, they will have a confession. It's something that was promised to this jury from the opening statement. It's what we know about this case, why they were able to move forward with those charges. But when you look at it in the span of the nine and a half hours of interrogation video, you're trying to listen to what may uh, have prompted them or what may sound like the start of a confession. Let's take a listen to some of what we've heard today, which would be several hours hours into this 10 hour interrogation period. Miles is coming in threatened physically. Right, oh. right. Yeah, no, not physically threatened. When you were being paranoid. Uh, uh, 
before I started going to the VA, I always thought people were plotting against me. I always I didn't have any close friends. I still don't have close friends. Uh, I always mistrust people. I have not gone to a cookout with anyone at the big. I have not gone to a cookout with anyone at TV or outside north. And it was all just my own mental Nobody is after me. I started taking the pills and I thought I had meddled out. The mentioning of the pills there, we know that's something the defense wants to hammer home with this jury. I noticed some jurors writing when he's been talking about the medication that he was taking, the effects of that medication, especially when he drank. Uh, this is medication that was taken for a PTSD diagnosis, which we may hear much more about once this goes to the defense case. But that's what we're hearing now, Michael. We're also hearing these uh, investigators constantly ask him about when the gun was fired when his service weapon was fired last he told them it had been months before when he was in qualification rounds but uh, they are trying to get him to change his story or hear that he may have fired it much more recently that's some of what's coming out right now all right so as we said a couple of times julia this jury is having to sit through the full nine and a half to ten hours of this interrogation uh on demand of the defense which the judge agreed to did the defense give an actual reason uh, for wanting this jury to sit through the 10 hours of this video. A lot of that discussion happened during sidebar, but we know that this defense is combating. They are challenging this confession, claiming that it was a false confession, coerced by police and something not proper in the way that it eventually came out. So showing this jury the entire span and the time period of when this was happening, and we broke down some of that timeline to really show you just when this was happening and perhaps explain how sleepy this defendant looks often when he's being interrogated. This happened September 15th of 2018 starting at around midnight is when that be on the lookout was put out by authorities An hour later 1257 in the morning is when his truck was first observed and then the troopers tried to confront him at a gas station around 102 a.m. then an hour and a half later it's when he's actually located after uh, there was this chase of sorts he's located behind that pickup truck and then he's arrested at 238 a.m. Then they, he arrives at the substation for that interview, 2.48, and about an hour later is when they start that interrogation. That's 3.21 in the morning that they are beginning that questioning, and it doesn't end until 12 noon. So really the next day, but it's still Saturday after all of those hours of being in the room. So we know the defense wants to show that he was fed a lot of information, and we have a portion of this interview that shows that back and forth with the investigators. Take a listen. You're a family man. You're very obviously not a bad person. We understand that you go through some stuff that sometimes other people aren't going to understand. And I'm asking you to explain some of the stuff that happened and why you feel like you need to keep referring to us like we should know this and we should know that. Um, I'm not going to play around. I'm not going to pretend I know something I don't. I don't know what you're referring to when you say that. But I do know you picked someone up earlier. That I do know. Wait, huh? Wait, I don't know where you picked her up, but I know you picked someone up earlier. Um, you took your house. I know you took your house. So you were able to describe your house, your address, the inside of your house, your backyard, describe you my name. Like we said, I mean, it'd be kind of hard to say, that's not my truck. Oh, okay. Yeah, on the video. And that's not me at this gas station. That's not me here. And that's why we want to talk to you. What gas what, station? What happened earlier? Right. What happened? Which gas station? Which one? 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 You were there. Okay. And you were there with somebody you knew. Somebody you knew. Picked up before, somebody you've talked to before. Somebody who knew by name. Um, yeah. Say something got out of hand. A little bit of a disagreement in the car. And that's why we're here. 
over this suspect saying he doesn't remember what happened and not agreeing initially for those first hours Michael with these investigators who are giving him a lot of information about what they know about what happened yeah no doubt and there's a lot of talk of blackouts and stuff I'm interested in why the defense didn't go more in that direction and finally Julia uh, as of right now um, we all know the interrogations are super important to police work but what other direct evidence is there right now linking Ortiz to the murders, as far as we know right now, other than his confession? As far as what the jury knows from the evidence, you know, we haven't even really gotten to the confession. They don't have any eyewitness testimony of him actually committing these crimes. So as far as what the jury has, they don't have that evidence. But there's many weeks to come in terms of what the prosecution is going to lay out in front of them.